At first glance, the Juniper Hill Inn looks like the ideal hotel for a dream vacation. Nature all around, a beautiful town nearby, and other wonders. Well, you'll think that only if you see it from the outside, because inside it's a complete mess. Rooms that smell like a sewer, a staff that doesn't get paid on time, and owners who are undoubtedly some of the worst Ramsay has ever met. Did Gordon give up on this one? It sounds difficult, but with those managers, you'll understand why. In the first part of this hellish saga, we travel to Windsor, Vermont, to visit the Juniper Hill Inn, a hotel that is over 100 years old. With 28 luxurious bedrooms, two large dining rooms, and paintings everywhere, it's a dream destination. Its atmosphere reeks of history, although its owners, Robert Dean II, and his boyfriend, Ari Nicky, have barely been able to manage the property for the past six years, and they are more concerned with showing off their luxuries than taking care of business. In fact, I don't think they even know it's a hotel yet, since they keep inviting their friends for free, while regular customers have to pay exorbitant prices and the staff barely receives a fraction of their payments. With that pace of life, Juniper Hill seems doomed. But you know Gordon Ramsay, he loves a challenge. Before arriving at the hotel, Chef Ramsay wanders around the town of Windsor for a bit. He learns from talking to the locals that they do not feel welcome at the Juniper Hill Inn because the owners, Robert and Ari, haven't been very welcoming to the town locals since they bought the place. At the hotel, things don't get any better either, as it is full of antique items that, yes, are beautiful, but there are too many of them, and they make it look like a museum. Here's the thing, though. You would never think that such a beautiful and historic place is actually losing over $200,000 a year due to insufficient customers. In his room, Ramsey is delighted with its appearance, but the atmosphere is a little different. It smells like a sewer. $350 for a room that smells like a sewer? No wonder no one goes to this hotel. After moving into a new room, Gordon orders lunch, something that takes the kitchen team by surprise as they only serve breakfast and dinner. Hey, Chef Julian, Ramsey wants lunch. What am I supposed to do with that information? While waiting for his food, Ramsey meets Barbara, an elderly but glamorous waitress who reveals that she and the rest of the staff don't get paid on time. And as for lunch, Quite expensive, by the way. Chef Ramsay didn't like it, as the pork chop was a bit raw and the crab cakes, I'd rather not talk about it. On the other hand, he quite liked the dessert, but guess what? It wasn't even made there. That got on Chef Ramsay's patience, who summoned Chef Julian to voice his opinion. I've just spent $74 for three plates of absolute dire, dated shit food. I think that pretty much sums up the quality of this place. But the focus quickly shifts to Robert when Ramsey learns that his head chef barely makes $400 a week. What's worse is that Robert doesn't cooperate. On the contrary, he rejects the accusations and flees to his $100,000 motorhome. So that's where all the money went. Sick of the toxic environment of the hotel, Ramsey decides to visit Ida, the previous chef who quit because of the salary and working conditions. She even had to buy food on her own to serve it in the hotel. All because Robert thinks he is a king and everyone should obey him. Fortunately, Chef Ramsay arrived to burst that bubble. But Ida doesn't want to return to Juniper Hill, even after the renovations. Back at the hotel, Chef Ramsay confirms that all the employees are humiliated by Robert, especially the manager, Ryan, who shows him the basement full of gadgets, antiques, and personal items. But wait, you haven't seen the office yet. And the containers. Wait a minute. I was watching Hotel Hell, not Hoarders. Finally, Ramsey meets up with Ari, who has invested his life savings in the hotel while his boyfriend buys things he doesn't need. Your biggest problem mm -hmm. is not Juniper Hill. Your biggest problem is fucking Robert. Finally, someone says it. Thank you, Chef Ramsey. As night falls, a lot of guests show up for dinner, as they know Ramsey is in the hotel. The problem is that Robert and Ari immediately invite them to the tables causing real stress for Julian because of the immense amount of orders. Meanwhile, Ari gives an art class to the diners, and Robert guides other customers to show them some relic stories. They definitely should have bought a museum, not a hotel. Back in the dining rooms, the guests receive their dishes cold because of the lousy ordering. But hey, at least many got free drinks because communication between the bar and the kitchen is totally zero. I love that promotion. 
Again, Ramsay has to bring order to the place, forcing Robert and Julian to communicate. That's how people understand each other, by talking. At the end of the day, Ramsay calls one of his classic meetings, where the staff vent about their discomfort. They wait weeks to get paid, while their bosses enjoy luxurious living in the motorhome. I don't have to work here. Go on then, you pompous fuck. After that, Gordon makes it clear to them that they need a structure, and Robert better become that leader or his golden palace is gonna fall. In the second part, Ramsay learns something even worse. Remember how Robert usually invites his friends to the hotel for free? Well, those people don't even leave tips. Or do they? Faced with these accusations, Robert claims that he's kept only a percentage of the tips to motivate his staff to do things right. To prove Ramsay wrong, Robert calls his friends to ask if they have tipped at his hotel. His friends reply that they have tipped, but not exactly to his staff, but to Robert. For God's sakes, Robert, you're taking money from a 70-year-old lady. As soon as he hears that, Ramsay leaves the place furious, while Robert bursts into tears because he's been accused of being a thief. Well, pal, that's because you are. But despite his anger, Ramsay decides to return to bring justice to the staff. Okay, it didn't take long for him to come back, but Ramsay quit for those minutes. Then, Gordon convinces Robert to sell his huge collection of trinkets and art to inject funds into the hotel, though auctioneer Amy points out that most items are copies in poor condition. From a $300,000 valuation, we went to a $25,000 value. Robert, if you're going to spend a fortune on collectibles, at least make it quality. Ramsey uses that bad news to give Robert a slap of reality, making it clear to him that his diva attitude has sunk the hotel and they'll need to try a lot harder to save it. Or he can just quit if he doesn't feel up to it. Let's get back to the hellish Juniper Hill, where guests express their disappointment with the terrible service and lack of organization at the hotel. Those opinions do matter to Robert, but Ari adopts a very arrogant attitude, ignoring their criticisms. Dude, you bought a hotel. What did you expect? That it would take care of itself? As part of his renovation plan, Gordon asked Chef Julian to prepare three dishes of his choice for a much lower price than the $74 regular menu. But when it comes time to present the food to Robert, Ramsay pretends he cooked those dishes. Of course, the businessman gives him a thousand compliments, but when he learns that the meal was prepared by Julian, he feels some regret. Robert says sorry, and if that wasn't enough, Robert also apologizes to the rest of the staff, showing his regret for being so cruel to them. Although the economic situation of Juniper Hill is critical, the staff felt hope again, and that is the basis for any relaunch. The next step in the plan is to attract the locals, so Ramsey takes Robert to a brewery in town where the innkeeper invites everyone to his hotel for a good time. Now that's character development. And speaking of development, Gordon's team has completed the renovations of Juniper Hill, which is now not just a hotel for rich people, but for all types of people. Both the lobby and the dining room look much more uncluttered and elegant, without a lot of fancy decorations in between. On the other hand, the rooms were unchanged except for the bad smell due to a pipe defect, a problem that no longer exists thanks to the plumbers. Finally, we have the other dining room now converted into the blue bar, where the staff is surprised by a lot of people enjoying drinks. They haven't even officially opened and they already have customers. How wonderful. As they prepare for the relaunch, Sarah, the inn assistant, complains that her boss's dog is wandering around the place, but Ari, proud as ever, reminds her that he's the boss. Shortly after that incident, Ramsey finds Sarah crying in her room over how Ari disrespected her. Fortunately, Ramsey manages to convince her to return to the others as she is important to the team. After making it clear to Ari that his place is behind the scenes, Ramsey returns to the kitchen to remind Julian that he shouldn't do everything on his own, but lean on his sous chef, Nita. At first, Julian refuses to ask for help, so Ramsey, upset that he ignored his advice, explains to him the importance of working as a team. I don't understand you, Julian. First, you were complaining that you had to do everything alone, and now you refuse help. Thanks to that, the chef begins to trust Nita, and the orders are soon delivered to the guests, among whom is Steve Talon, a hotel inspector who had a very bad first impression of Juniper Hill some time ago but now looks amazed by the renovations. But just as everything was going well, Ari reappears to apologize to Sarah for yelling at her. You scared me for a second, but well done, Ari. Robert also shows great progress, paying Ryan everything he owed him from a month ago. Let's hope he does the same with the rest of the staff. Seeing that the relaunch was a success, 
and all aspects of the hotel are working. Ramsey says goodbye to everyone and wishes them luck for the future. And talking about the future, what happened to Juniper Hill after the show? Both Robert and Ari learned to be a bit more open and humble people, which is nice enough. But was that enough to save Juniper Hill? Well, the answer is a resounding no. Sadly, Juniper Hill had to close. But how did they get there? We have to go back to the original filming of the episode in February 2012. Within days of its airing in August of that same year, Robert and Ari posted a message on their Facebook to thank Ramsey for his participation in the show. And while they were portrayed a little too cruelly for their liking, the couple was happy with the ratings the episode got and the great impact it made on the hotel. During that time, they welcomed many guests thanks to the show's influence. Although many of the original staff members like Chef Julian had left by then in search of new opportunities. But things changed for the owners in March of 2013 when they had to close the hotel temporarily due to frozen water pipes and their debt to the bank reached an incredible $1,163,355 plus an extra 80 grand in back taxes to the city of Windsor. They had a lot of trouble paying those debts due to the bad economy at the time and Ari's health problems, or so Robert told the public. Things got worse in July as a bank's debt increased along with the taxes. So much so that the property would be auctioned off in August if they didn't pay on time. Finally, the inevitable happened in April 2014, when after a long time in foreclosure, the Juniper Hill Inn was auctioned off and purchased by Kenny Lucci and her sister, Brenda Bradley, for $405,000. Which is interesting because in 2005, Robert and Ari purchased the place for $1.6 million. Ouch. Since 2016, the Juniper Hill has had its doors open, but with another name, Windsor Mansion Inn. And the truth is that things improved quite a bit. With a renovated style, but maintaining its colonial essence, the hotel enjoys excellent reviews and a 9.2 rating on Hotels.com. The new owners definitely know how to make the most of it. And what about the previous owners? Apart from losing Juniper Hill, not much is known about Robert and Ari as they have no social networks, and it's difficult to know if the accounts with their names on LinkedIn and Facebook are the real ones. According to ArrestFacts.com, Ari Nikki was arrested in 2015 for assaulting a police officer, and his bail was $500. Did Robert pay it? Maybe, but we don't even know if that page is reliable. On the other hand, you can find a profile of Ari Nikki on Radaris that details his studies in Helsinki, which is consistent with his foreign background. Also, the account information said he is living in Palm Beach. Beyond that, there is no concrete information about the couple, but it makes sense. As to this day, they are still getting comments of hate for their cruelty in the episode. 